and I'm just going to try one more time. Now that I posted that one, maybe it'll decide to work. Nope. All right. Well, that's too bad. That's life. That's life, folks. Um, okay. Oh, I did hit record. We got that happening. That's amazing. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to move this little box over here and this over here. Oops. Okay. Are we ready? Officially ready? <laughs> we were, we, apparently we were officially ready a few seconds ago. Okay. That's right. We're officially ready for the Georgie and Patty show. <laughs> There's more to the song, but that's all you get for today. <laughs> so I was thinking this morning, um, you know, when we were getting, as I'm having my morning thoughts about what we're going to talk about today, which is going to be about, you know, niche markets and client avatars and all those kinds of things. So that's our main topic for today. <laughs> but, um, I was thinking, you know, just about yesterday as I was out and about, about just how adaptable we are as humans, you know, and it kind of goes back to that whole life cycle that we talk about and looking at nature, because we often see, you know, the little green grass or little plants cracking or coming up through the cracks in the sidewalks, you know, we're so, so adaptable. And it just amazes me with how quickly we're actually kind of adapting to this new environment um, that we're in right now. So even if you're feeling a little bit like, ah, I don't know what I'm going to do and I'm feeling a little bit confused. Just, I think it's have that faith and that trust that you will adapt. We will adapt. We will come through this um, because we're, we're, we're built to, we're human. Life finds a way. It's not the Jurassic Park thing. Life finds a way. Life will find a way. <sighs> my my, my T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the other thing I was thinking about, because often we get a little bit stuck, you know, in our business and stuff like that. I was watching a Simon Sinek video and he was talking about, you know, when you actually have passion for something, when we fall, we find a way to fix it. We find the solutions, we get back up, we keep going. And when I was thinking about Patty and I and, you know, our work that we do together and we are so, so passionate about helping purpose-driven entrepreneurs, <clears throat> um, you know, find their clients, get their message into the world and be able to make a living doing that. And when I look over the last year and a bit, like we have fallen down, we've gotten back up, we've changed things, we've looked for the problems people are having and we're so committed to it. Like our passion is so strong for it. We just, we keep going, we'll find a way, we'll find a way, you know, we're like that little, little piece of grass in the sidewalk. Here we come, here we come, you know, you just, can't keep us down because we're like, nope, there we will, we will find the way. I know it in my soul because it's something we're so passionate about and we're so driven um, by our purpose. And I really believe that everyone on the call um, is like that as well. Like if, if you keep showing up and you keep listening to us, I really believe you're a purpose-driven entrepreneur and you will find a way. And we will share everything we know to try to make that a little bit easier um, for you. So it's just having that faith and knowing that when you're looking to solve problems for people, um, Simon said this really good, I'm going to read it because it's really good. He's like, look for real problems that people who are on the receiving end of your product or service are suffering from and solve their problems for them in their way with their words. So really start to think about who are you serving and what are, what are they suffering from right now and how can you help them? And the last thing I wanted to share with you this morning before we get going is, um, you know, yesterday we talked a little bit about sales conversations and not making them pitchy and, you know, no one wants to have those conversations. And I just happened to read this little quote this morning. I think it's from the movie, actually, The Big Kahuna. It's because I didn't recognize the name Phil Cooper, but I think that's where it's from. So I'll read this for you too, because I think it applies. So it doesn't matter whether you're selling Jesus or Buddha or civil rights or how to make money in real estate with no money down. That doesn't make you a human being. It makes you a sales rep. If you want to talk to somebody honestly as a human being, ask them about their kids, find out what their dreams are, just to find out for no other reason. Because as soon as you lay your hands on a conversation to steer it, it's not a conversation anymore. It's a pitch. And you're not a human being, you're a sales rep. So I just thought that was so fitting when we're making that initial contact with people and we're just reaching out. It really is just a conversation. It's a way for me to get to know you and you to get to know me. 
we haven't moved into really talking anything about our business, but it's about, you know, being a human. And we are all about that heart to heart connection and how do we bring humanity into sales, marketing and business. So that's my, my morning tips and information for you. And now uh, we will move straight into, do you really have to have a niche, a target market, a client avatar? We say maybe not. I think that's my cue. That's your cue. You're up. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I made slides. <laughs> so today, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, uh, for what Georgie uh, spoke of this morning about this idea of having faith, and uh, we're going to go there today uh, in terms of a topic that is addressed by everybody about this idea of niches, target markets, ideal clients, avatars, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the term that I've started using and I have fallen in love with is your future clients. Um, and we're going to talk more about what future clients are. And I'm going to invite you to see everything that you do um, in sales and marketing as being about your future clients uh, rather than thinking about niches and target markets and avatars. And there's more to that than semantics. Trust me on that one. <laughs> we're going to go there today. Um, and we're going to look at, you know, if you're not going to have a niche or a target market or an avatar or something like that, you still need a way to identify who's going to buy from you future clients. Uh, <laughs> we're going to take a look at what that is and ha a different way to approach it. So, uh, thing one, uh, just to address the elephant in the room, this idea that you must define your target market, choose a niche and create a client avatar or something like that is something that we hear from every marketing guru ever, including me. Past me used to say this too. I think past Georgie used to say it as well. She uh, did. <laughs> it gets repeated so often by so many people that it starts to become viewed as a law or a must or a rule or a principle that cannot be violated. However, it is an opinion. And it may be a strongly held opinion. It may be an opinion held by a lot of people. And it may be an opinion that works very well for a lot of people. However, it is still an opinion. And from this, I'm just going to invite you from today into the future, every day, when you hear advice given by experts in their field, um, including us, including you, is to append this in their opinion to what you are hearing. So this idea that you must have a, a, an avatar in somebody's opinion, that is an opinion. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is our opinion. And we don't always say it. And in fact, it's not necessarily a great thing to say when it comes to marketing. It's kind of understood that whatever you are saying is your opinion. But sometimes we don't stop to reflect on that, that this is the truth. A lot of the stuff that you hear as absolute musts, or you shouldn't do this, or you should do that, is an opinion. And we invite you to have them and to share them because they're powerful for marketing. And they are opinions. And what we invite our clients to do always, always, always is to find something that fits for them. Uh, I, I wrote a book. It's called The U-Shaped Business. I named that for a reason. It's because I believe that we, all of our businesses have a unique size and shape and personality to them. And that what fits for me might not fit for Georgie, might not fit for the gurus who say you have to have an avatar. Uh, so it's about finding uh, advice and opinions that fit for you. Uh, and there's more than one way to do this. There's um, multiple ways to succeed. A lot of different ideas can work it just fine. What you're looking for is what works for you. And this is our permission slip of the day, is that uh, you don't 
have to have a niche, a target market, or an avatar, or an ideal client, or any other of the description that dehumanizes people, puts them in a box, into a category, um, and has a bunch of irrelevant attributes attached to it. Uh, so this is our opinion. This is permission. And I don't have a permission slip on the screen that says this, but you are also welcome to have one of those things. <laughs> if it works for you, then that's perfect. I, you, you know, if you have a niche, if it's clear to you, um, and we'll talk about this in a moment. If you have it, you have permission for that too. You have permission to do what writes, what's what works for you. We have all sorts of permission slips. We have blank pads full of permission slips. We will give you all sorts of permission slips uh, for you to do you. Um, but if you're struggling with this and you're having to think about it too much, then I would invite you to let go of it. Uh, the idea of um, too often what we're told as far as a target market, and I hate that term, by the way, target market is so violent. Um, niche, avatar. Avatars are made up things. Like they're, they're not human, like they're, they're made up. Um, and often the exercises around coming up with this spend way too much time in your imagination trying to picture people that don't actually exist and require you to list attributes that are meaningless. Uh, for a lot of our clients, purpose-driven people, things that people insist that you have in your avatar, like a gender, like an age, like an occupation, like um, where they live, like how much money they make, like whether or not they have dogs or cats or how long their fingers and nails are, are completely irrelevant. Um, and people struggle to do this. And in our opinion, <laughs> this stuff is a waste of time. If it's not immediately relevant to your business and the kinds of people that you serve, there's not a lot of point to doing it. You don't need, you know, like Jordi was saying earlier, if you're a nail tech, you might need to know about fingernails because the people who are going to buy from you are going to be into that and they're going to like their nails a certain length or color and it's going to be important to them. Uh, however, if you don't do anything about fingernails, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It's, and I don't know why these kinds of things show up on these, these sorts of uh, profiles. Cause they, I, even when I used to talk about ideal clients, I did not go into the irrelevant. Um, but if you're having to spend a lot of time in your imagination, trying to um, invent, ideal clients and ideal clients attributes, uh, you may be better off letting that idea go for now. What's been my experience in working with clients who have ideal clients who have a specific niche is that it's freaking obvious. Uh, they know it. When I ask a client um, to describe who their ideal clients are, some people are kind of lost and they're all over the place. <laughs> they're having trouble with it. Others are so precise, they know exactly. Um, and they know exactly not because they made it up in their imagination and they're really solid on this invented avatar that doesn't exist and, and never will exist. They're solid because they have experience and because they've worked with clients before. And they rattle off the information so easily that it is a it's a 10 minute exercise on the phone where they describe who they are in sufficient detail. They know who buys from them is, is really what it is. And sometimes it's not a single uh, niche or a single um, market or a single type of client. Often they can be grouped and they will often say things like I have multiple markets that I serve. I serve this market and this market and this market. Uh, and then they give, um, relevant details about who those people are. And what often happens for people is in the very beginning, when we talked about like level one businesses, you don't know. You can't know level one, zero client, you can't know. All you can do is guess. Um, but after you've worked with enough clients and you've had good clients and you've had not so good clients, uh, this stuff kind of rises up organically and all of a sudden you go, oh, 
there it is. <laughs> Those are my ideal clients. They were right in front of me all along, but I didn't know that until I had the experience. Uh, so if it rises up organically for you, if it's easy to answer, if you have a particular passion and experience in a particular area, I mean, I've worked with people who are new, who are very clear on, uh, on a niche for themselves and bang on. So this is, can be, you know, you can have one if it works for you, but if it doesn't work for you, free to let it go. However, <laughs> this is one of the, this is one of the things that, uh, you need for your marketing is that you need to know who is going to buy from you. And this is different than looking at a target market for lack of better terms. This is about knowing who is going to buy from you. And this moves into our thought of the day, which is about future clients. So Magic. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of magic, maybe a little bit woo woo. That's okay. Um, a lot of our people are, are open to that. But I'm going to invite you just for a few moments to consider something, uh, to set aside all the kinds of ideas that you may have about clients, ideal clients, target markets, niches, however that is described, and to think about something. This is my deep reflection uh, over the last few days, is this idea of future clients. And what do we know about future clients. Even the term alone, future clients, implies some things. The first thing being that they exist. Um, your clients exist. They are living and breathing human beings who are on the planet right now. Um, unless you're really thinking into the future 20 or 30 years from now and they haven't been born yet. Um, the people who will be your future clients will be your future clients. That's why we call them future clients. They will exist in the, they will exist in your business in the future. Um, one of the things that I do in my own business is I have a yearly tracking sheet. And on one of the pages of that tracking sheet, I list all of my clients, their names, when they bought from me, what they bought from me, um, how they heard about me. This is kind of tracking. We advise our clients to do <laughs> keep track of that stuff. And I add to that list each month. When I do my monthly review, I add to that list the new clients that have shown up and I have this long list. Uh, and every January, I make a new copy of this and it, it's got nothing on it. it. It's a blank sheet. And I don't know, four or five years ago, I looked at this sheet and I just realized in that moment, it's like this sheet by the end of December is going to have names on it. I'm going to know some of the names because I've got clients that are continuing to work with me, clients who come back. I'm going to know some of the names, but there will be names on this list on December 31st that um, I don't know right now. I don't know who they're going to be. And, and, I have faith that they're going to show up. I had been in business long enough to expect that a certain number of clients was going to come into my world every year. Those are my future clients, living, breathing human beings that are already out there and that are going to buy from me. And I, when you think about, um, about your business and about your future clients, have faith that they are going to be there. If you have a goal for your business of working with X number of clients, you need to believe that they're out there. If you don't believe that your clients are out there, if you don't have faith that they're going to show up, that if you do the work required to, um, to bring them in, to help them show up, um, then maybe you, you need to reconsider whether you want to be in business. Like you have to believe that those goals are possible, that those clients are out there um, and that they will show up. This is what we know about them. They're there. And the third thing I'm going to um, suggest about your future clients is that they said, yes, your future clients signed up with you. They paid you money. They said yes to, the, to your services. Yesterday we had a comment about um, nobody, want, nobody wants to get on the phone because they're afraid it's going to be a sales pitch. I'm going to suggest that your future clients will be happy to get on the phone and happy to hear about what you offer because they are your future clients, because they're going to say yes. Uh, 
And you do not need to convince them, convert them, trick them, manipulate them, persuade them. You're not just, um, this is the difference, I think, between this idea of imagining who your clients are and trying to turn everybody you meet into a client, which a lot of uh, salespeople um, approach sales from that perspective. I'm going to talk to as many people as possible and I'm going to try to convince every single one of them to say yes to my product. I mean, we see that. We see products and services and programs called get everybody to say yes. Um, what if instead you looked at this as they're already ready to say yes. I don't have to convince them, convert them, persuade them or anything. They're ready to say yes. They're waiting for me to show up. They want what I have to offer. Um, and if you were to believe these things, that your future clients are already out there, uh, that they're waiting for you, they want what you have, you don't have to convince them or persuade them or anything, how would believing that change your approach to sales and market? Would it? I would be really curious if, um, if you're here live and you have any thoughts or reflections on this, we'd love to hear them. Because uh, I know when when I really embraced this fact, it, it changed a few things about um, what I believe about sales and marketing. And I'm wondering if it uh, has hit anyone else in the same way. Yeah, we would love to love to hear your comments um, in the chat. Like, just imagine that you actually took this belief on. Like, if you just sort of sat there for a second, and you're getting ready to start your work day, and you were like. I actually expect my clients to show up. I believe that they're out there. I believe I can kind of take this different approach to sales and marketing. Like if I create my tracking sheet, I believe those people will show up. If, as long as I do the things I need to do and I'm doing my consistent actions, I believe they're going to appear. Like imagine what that would feel like for you. So I love this. Oh my God, yes, that's a much better way of looking at it. Believing that would, will change my motivational level and much more. Yes. The word came to me as I listed is freedom. Yeah, I love that one. Freedom from trying to find a cookie cutter and people to fit into it. Most definitely would change things. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Yeah. Uh, I would love to know what led to your pivot. Well, that'll be a good question when we get to the Q&A. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, I, remind me to cover that when we get to the Q and A. Yeah, yeah, I will. Oh, this is the main thing that changed for me when I embraced this this belief is that I'm like they're out there. Um, they want to work with me, they're going to say yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out and look for them and I'm gonna do stuff to help them find me. And from this perspective, it's like, okay, anybody that, like, if we talk about your typical salesperson goes into a networking event and goes, oh, okay, there's 20 people in the room, how do I get 20 people to buy from me? Versus, oh, there's 20 people in the room, I wonder. I wonder if any one of those is my future client, or maybe there's somebody here that knows one of my future clients. It becomes a different kind of conversation. It becomes a little bit more exploratory. It's, you're not, um, uh, to use Kevin Knowles' um, uh, perspective, his thing, you're, you're not a pit bull on a postman <laughs> about those people in the room. <laughs> and, and you're not gonna kind of attack them and, uh, you know, blast your service out to everybody, it's going to be more of an exploratory kind of thing. It's like, okay, so I'm, I'm searching for, for them. And when you're searching for something, it's really helpful to have clues. Now, here are three things that you already can know 100% about your future clients. Here's three things that are true about them. These are your three clues to get going on this search for those people is you know three things. The first thing you know is that they have a problem that you can help them solve. Otherwise, they're not going to hire you. They, they, they have to have a reason to pay you, and that's going to be that they have a problem that you can help them solve. 
And sometimes we can um, phrase this in a more positive way is to say that there is something that they want that they don't have yet that you can help them get. Um, and I always kind of, because I'm view the world this way, I go, well, the problem is they don't have it yet. <laughs> so, uh, but this thing is true. They have no reason. They might be wonderful people. They might be the, your new best friend. Uh, but if they don't have a problem that you can help them solve, then they're not going to hire you. They won't have a reason to hire you. So you can add that to the, kind of your list when you think about people who are going to buy from you, that this is true. And like Georgie mentioned at the beginning um, of today's uh, presentation, the idea that you need to be clear about what that is and to see it from their perspective. It's always about seeing it from their perspective. How, what, th this is the absolute most important thing about marketing ever is to be able to see the problem that they're experiencing from their perspective, to use their language, to explain about explain it in their own words, to reach them with where they are now. It's not about you. It's not about your service. It's about what they want. It's about the problem that they're experiencing. And we talk more about that tomorrow when we talk about messaging. Um, but this is first thing you know. Absolutely. Second, they want to solve that problem <laughs> in the way that you offer it. You know, they they it's. A lot of people have problems and they like to complain and they like to bitch, um, but they don't necessarily want to solve them. A lot of people have problems that they don't recognize or don't consider problems. And we can look at a group of people. We can look at a specific person. You could go, you could go, wow, you have a problem. <laughs> you have a problem and I can fix it. You should hire me. And they don't want to, they're not interested. And so that means that they're not um, they're not one of your future clients because they don't want to solve the problem or they don't want to solve the problem in the way that you offer. Um, so if you're selling a course, maybe they want one-on-one. -on -one. If you're selling one-on-one, -on -one, maybe they want to join a group. But they might want to solve the problem in a way that you don't offer. In that case, they're somebody else's client. And, you know, maybe you could help connect them to somebody else that could solve that problem in a way that they, that they want it solved. Um, but, uh, you know, anytime you find yourself in a conversation with somebody and you find themself, yourself trying to convince and convert and manipulate and trying to get them to do something they don't want to do, it's a sign that you're not talking to one of your future clients. You might be talking to someone else's client, but not one of yours. Uh, the third thing is that they're ready, willing, and able to pay your fee. So they might have a problem you can solve. They might want to solve it. They might want the service that you offer and they don't have the money to pay for it, that is a sign that they're not one of your future clients because your future clients are going to show up on that tracking sheet with a number next to them that they have paid you. Uh, so these three things we know. Um, I, I will even go as far as to say that uh, these are not opinions. <laughs> these are, these are the, the true things about your ideal clients, like about your future clients, is they hired you for a reason. They wanted to hire you and they paid you. Um, and, you know, if they didn't pay you, they're not actually a client. Um, so those, those three things that we know, we know those things for sure. Uh, so armed with that information on your search, that'll get you started. And in terms of, you know, your ideal clients, your right clients, uh, the people you're meant to serve, you're going to discover that there's going to be an attraction, a chemistry. Uh, you're going to like them and they're going to like you. Uh, that's part of it. Uh, especially if you look um, at the, the experiences that you've had in your business. If you think about uh, former clients that you've worked with. Uh, I know for me, I really like my clients. I, I like my clients a lot. Um, part of my past clients, um, a few of them were there to teach me uh, about what I like, <laughs> about working with clients and what I like to see in a client. Uh, so some of them were not a good fit. Uh, and I did not enjoy working with them. And that gave me more information. It gave me more clues about my future clients. And there may be future clients for me that still aren't a great fit. And the reason I'm going to have those future clients is because I need to learn a little bit more about what my ideal clients, what 
you know, the clients I'm here and meant to serve are going to be like. So uh, this is this is what emerges when we're talking about like kind of emerging organically is you discover that some clients are easier to work with. Some clients are more enjoyable to work with. They get better results. Uh, you can serve them better. And you start to notice what those attributes are as you work with clients. And by the time you get into that level two that we we're talking about yesterday, you have enough of this information that you have a few more clues about who your future clients are and what they look like. And you can bring that into your marketing. Um, so there is, a, there is a degree of chemistry and one of the topics we're gonna talk about at some point uh, is this idea of showing up authentically uh, to, uh, to help those clients figure out who you are. So, that is, uh, that's what that's what I have to say about uh, about clients, your future clients, and uh, ready to uh, take questions. Yeah, I think it's I think it's so good, you know. And I mean, I totally agree with everything you said. Um, and it does create such a um, like someone said in the chat that the, the fear is gone having that mindset when you're actually looking for your future clients and you're thinking about them as your future client it makes this whole sales and marketing thing you know a lot more fun uh i really love fun so the more fun i can make things the better so for me it makes it a lot more fun and someone in the chat also said especially when i think about them waiting for me it makes me think i better get busy i don't want them waiting for too long for what they need awesome i think that's so such a good point like um it also, I think that fear of rejection thing kind of goes away a bit because it's like, it's okay. They're just, they're not my client. They're not my client. I'm on this search looking for them. Almost like they remember that Pokemon game thing that everyone's running around looking for the Pokemon. It's like, oh, where's my future client? Where's my future client? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. It's, it's, it's a nice place to be. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're talking about the sales conversations I, I shared yesterday about, you know, being kind of freaked out about having sales conversations. And I think that that was where I started to see some of this is I realized that I love talking to my clients. Like I love, like when I have appointments in my calendar to meet with a client, I'm excited about it. I love talking to my clients. Uh, it, it's a joyful part of my work. And it's kind of when I thought about the sales conversations, it's like, okay, at some point, the people who say yes are going to be those clients that I love to talk to. I'm going to want to talk to them. It's going to be easy to talk to them. It's going to be fun to talk to them. We're going to laugh. They're going to be nice people. And I made myself a little note and I stuck it to my monitor that says, my clients are nice people. Um, and I brought that into having those sales conversations. It's like, if the person isn't nice, if I don't like them, if, if it doesn't feel good to talk to them, um, then it's kind of like wrong number. <laughs> that's a, not my client and that's okay. Exactly. Sorry. Gotta go. Yeah. Like, um, I think, I think we forget about that a lot of times, right? Is that we do have that ability to get off the phone, <laughs> move on. It's okay. Totally yeah. fine. And it's from that place of you're just not my client or you're not someone I really want to hang out with or talk to. No big deal. Yeah. Perfect for someone else. You know? Um, here we have when I reflect on my past clients, you're bang on. I really genuinely like every one of them. Yeah. Right? It's it's like you're people become like I know for me, and I think for Patty as well, you know, our clients aren't just clients. They're not just, you know, the people that pay our bills. Like you, like we really, really like them and it's so fun. And it's, you know, we really get excited when they start doing well and we get those text messages and it's like, Hey, this is what's happening. We're like, yeah, because they're more like family and friends, you know, as opposed to just clients. And, you know, and I love getting the text messages too from people who be like, hey, I'm kind of struggling right now. Do you have 10 minutes? Yeah, I do. Right. Because it's not always sunshine and rainbows. But I think when you when you're working with those people that you really, really like, those are the kind of relationships that you build, you know, and it really is. It's, it's that human thing. You kind of can't get away from it. It's just let's just embrace it. <laughs> embrace the humanity. Um, and it's really a nice place to be. Yeah. And that's, that's that whole thing about, you know, um, people who believe what you believe in, right? Like part of the reason it is that way is because we do believe in having that, 
that human connection. It's like, if you like your clients, you've probably all, always been this way. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It's doing things in the way that really work for you, right? You'll hear some people, I don't want to let people have that much accessibility. Great. Awesome. For me, I love it, right? I love it. Let's send me the message. Let me have it. Ooh, it I, it's great for me, but that works for me. For other people, not so much. Perfect. There is no right or wrong, right? It's that whole and, if, but it's really getting clear about what are you okay with and doing the things that work really well for you. Um, let's see. I love my coaches. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> we like client love too. <laughs> we like client love too, yeah. <laughs> um, visualizing a group of friendly, reasonable people that are ready, willing, and able to pay my fee takes the pressure away and makes me feel more relaxed and confident about talking with people. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I had an image when you mentioned being out there so they can find you of the Batman spotlight. Marketing is like sending out a beam for others to see and be drawn to. Exactly. Exactly. And if you think of like the Batman spotlight, like you get to be the superhero, which is kind of fun. <laughs> right? It's just, you know, we're really just, we're helping people solve their problems. It's what, it's what we do. That's what our sales and marketing is all about, is just being out there, being a human and helping people. How can I help, you know, make your life better, make your business better, make your day better? That's what we do. And I, you know, I love that when you, when you sort of create that image in your head, it's a really nice thing to do. And then it's like, oh, I'm kind of excited to spend 24 hours a week talking to people or reaching out to people or connecting with people because I'm kind of, I'm looking for my people. I'm looking for my future clients. And if I'm not doing those steps and making some effort, you know, it's, it, it'll just take longer. Mm -hmm because they're waiting for you. They're looking. So, you know, it'll move faster when you do those steps to let them know you're there. Yeah. Uh, you guys are awesome. This and the rest of this series is changing everything. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's really important to us to bring, to, to bring value. And like I said, we, we know that you guys have amazing gifts and that your messages are so important and that the work that you're doing the world needs it and it needs it probably now more than ever so anything we can do to help you get that out there let people know that you're here um, and start to bring money into your businesses so that you can continue doing this we're, we're all in we are all in um, yeah uh, these kinds of clients also want to help and support you and they will refer you and make introductions Absolutely, 100%. Um, will you guys be on my 1 p.m. training today? 1 p.m. I won't be. You might be. I I'll check my one. Yeah. Yeah, I'll check my calendar. If at all possible, one of us will be there for sure. Be and yeah. this is the other really great thing, too, is being able to support our clients when they are doing the things that they're doing out in the world. You know, like I've been to lots of workshops and online presentations and talks and things like that. And not because I feel like I have to, or because it would be the right thing to do. I love it. I love being able to see our clients do what they do in their element, in their environment. Like it's awesome. It's awesome. Like, and it does provide, I guess, another level of service, which I didn't really think about till right now. Um, <laughs> actually, but I really, I do it because I, I like it. Um, so it's, it's really, it's cool. Really, yeah. really, really cool. Does anyone else? No, I, I know I promised to answer a question. And I oh, the, the pivot. Hang on. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. This is hilarious. My mouse isn't working. So instead of going to my, uh, my little pad to move the question up, I'm like scrolling on my notebook. 
<laughs> FYI, it doesn't work. <laughs> as magical as I think I am, for some reason I couldn't move it up. I'm like, what's going on? It's a future technology, Georgie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In your notebooks, we have thing in your hand. Um, I would love to know what led to your pivot. Yeah, you know, I I wouldn't. Um, I don't know that I would describe it as a pivot as much as kind of a a slow veer. <laughs> Um, I let go of um, kind of demographic attributes really early um, when I talked about the idea of ideal clients like I look back at some of my very first uh, presentations that I gave in like 2011 2012 and I used to parrot the same thing that everyone else said about about uh, who are they in terms of their gender and their age group and where do they live and do they like dogs or cats and all this other bullshit. Um, and I dropped that stuff really quickly because, because flat out clients would say, why do I need to know that? And I didn't have a good answer. And then I'm like, why do you need to know that? Oh, it's because some guru told me and I figured it, you know, that that was what you needed to do. Um, so I dropped that shit really quickly, um, that part of it. But I kept up with the idea that it was a good idea to choose a particular niche or a target market to an audience um, to focus on. And I ended up getting like a lot of resistance from people about that because they don't want to. Um, and a lot of times they are unable to. Um, so I started kind of relaxing that, relaxing that, focusing on problems, problems and what they want, problems and what they want, problems and what they want. And if it didn't matter, it didn't matter. Um, and kind of the idea of like, oh, well, maybe we could start with this group first or something like that. Um, but the big kind of the final chunks of the pieces fell into place last year, late last year when I found um, uh, a program called thoughtleaders.com.au where they talked about this idea of clusters and clusters being um, similar to a niche, but the idea that um, a single uh, consultant or expert could service multiple niches um, in a way that made sense. And it's just like, and then that clicked for me because because it had the best of both worlds. Um, there was each one was specific about the problem and, and the solution and maybe the kind of market and what you offered, uh, but you could have more than one. And the important part was to treat the market separate marketing separately. And I thought, ah, that makes that made really, really good sense to me. Uh, so that clicked into place. And then just this idea that uh, the honest truth is I've worked with people who are uh, quite successful at what they do and they don't have a specific niche or uh, one specific audience that they serve. Like the reality is that they may have what they describe as multiple markets. Uh, it kind of sorts itself out and, it, and you can, you can group it. I can take a look at the clients and go, okay, here's a group of these people and these people and these people. So there's like, there's some grouping that can happen, uh, but their success did not come necessarily from focusing on one. And I'm like, Oh, it's possible. Um, it's harder in a way <laughs> like I, you know the marketer in me still says it's easier <laughs> if there's a, if there's a specific <laughs> niche it is easier in some ways uh to do the marketing um it's easier for example to uh, run a facebook ad if you know that all of your uh, potential clients are astronauts and they're between the ages of 30 and 35 it's, it's just easier uh, to fill in the blanks for things like that. It's a little bit more challenging to write messages without um, without that uh, kind of obvious stuff in place, but it's not impossible. Um, and I would even go further and say that the idea of talking about the problems that they're experiencing or the results that they're looking for is far more powerful than saying that you sell something for astronauts between the ages of 30 and 35. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, do the different groups have the same problem you solve and you market to the different route they take to you? Can you solve different problems? Yes. If I understand the, the question correctly, yes. The, the, and we're going to talk about this tomorrow when we talk about the idea of messaging. You're still going to want to make your messaging specific. But the thing is, you can have... 27 different marketing messages out there without having to 
um, repaint the sign on your building. Like you don't have to change the, your entire business because you're going to market to astronauts for a while. You can market to astronauts, but you don't have to change your business to specializing in astronauts, only astronauts, you know, put pictures of the moon landing in, um, in your shop. Although that could be really cool. Um, but you don't have to do that. Uh, you, you can, you can test things, you can experiment, you can put marketing messages out to multiple groups and those messages can be specific. And that's one of the things um, about the world we live in now versus the world we live in back in like Madman era, where if you were going to pay a lot of money for marketing, it was going to reach a large number of people. And the more specific you could make it to the people who want to, um, uh, the people you want to reach, uh, the better off you were. Whereas now we can get really finely tuned into who we reach. You can be, get very specific with Facebook advertising. You can uh, search for specific people on LinkedIn and make connections with them. Uh, you, you know, you can reach a, a very small audience and all your advertising doesn't have to look the same. It's not like it's a 30 second spot that shows up on TV and you get one shot at it. It's not like that. You, you could make 30 second YouTube videos all day long and put them out on Facebook and see which one works. Uh, so we have more options now uh, for doing that. That sounded all really rambly. I don't know. If no, it's good. It. And she That's said there was a typo as well. Um, can you solve different problems? Yeah, of course you can solve different problems. Absolutely. And if you're like me, where you just like a whole bunch of different things, um, it, it's a really great thing because especially this cluster idea, right? Um, it's, it's awesome. Like I have a thing for um, adventure and endurance stuff and leadership, right? So I'm like, oh, I have a little cluster over here, which is, you know, doing leadership retreats in the mountains of Nepal. And yet it still fits in the same kind of overarching thing of, of what we do. Um, but it's, it's a different sort of problem group of people that, that we're, we're talking to and it's an experiment. Who knows how it'll go, but I'm excited about it. <laughs> I think it's going to be fun. So I think, you know, for someone like me who likes kind of variety and fun and novel ideas and things like that, it's, it's nice knowing that, you know, having to just tiny zero in on one specific problem and one specific thing feels like claustrophobic to me. And yet it's also interesting how it all kind of um, also lies under this umbrella of purpose-driven humans who want to have these heart-to-heart -heart connections and, you know, really be human beings. That definitely is the overarching thing for, for everything I do. Yeah. I, I would, uh, I would extend that to that. It's for anyone who is purpose-driven fact even if you're not it is <laughs> it's it's your values it's your personality it's your authenticity all of this it, it this idea it sounds kind of lightweight to say that you're gonna like your ideal clients and they're gonna like you um, but it's it's actually pretty profound uh, and that, and it can also be free because it means you get to be you uh, because your future clients will like you your future clients will like the you that you are. Um, you will be enough for them. The way you approach things is going, they're going to be happy with because your clients are happy with working with you. So your future clients are going, are going to be all excited. But you don't have to change for them. You're not going to change them, but you don't have to change you either. Exactly. I'm just thinking, yeah, I'm, our future clients like it when I show up on these calls and do dinosaur noises. <laughs> And the people who say that we giggle too much are not them. <laughs> exactly. The people that think that's super unprofessional. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, I'm like, oh my God, that just came out of my mouth. But it's like, actually, that's <laughs> literally what I would do. So <laughs> there's something free in being able to show up um, as, as who you are. And you yeah. will find the people that, that just, you know, like just believe what you believe and are okay with that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's not always the easiest place to be because I think we do get a lot of messages of how we're supposed to show up and what's appropriate for business and, you know, what professional looks like. Um, and so it can be sometimes challenging to, to know that, oh, 
I can be me. And it's that when we show up as who we really are, that's your, you know, unique selling proposition, really, because no one else in the whole world is you. Yeah. And, and it's, it's so interesting. Uh, it's interesting for me. That this is kind of like a, a little segue into what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Uh, but the idea, like a lot of times my clients are asking, how do I stand out? How do I stand out from everybody else um, who does what I do? And I'm like, you'd be more you. <laughs> it's like you turn up the volume on you. And that causes a little bit of a panic response sometimes because they're like, oh no, I have to be professional. I have to show up in a certain way. I have to talk a certain way. Um, <laughs> it's just like, I have to be like everyone else. I have to fit in because we have this need to belong and to fit in. And in business, we also want to stand out. And it's like, oh, how do you reconcile those two things? Um, spoiler. Exactly. We'll talk about tomorrow, but... Uh, yeah, that's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to it. Um, any other questions, thoughts, comments, um, things you'd like us to talk about? When you say purpose-driven, what does that mean from your perspective? I have an image of what that means to me, but not sure if it aligns with your definition. Does it mean showing up as yourself or coming from a place within yourself that is passionate? So my definition of purpose-driven would be that um, your purpose is, it's like that, that cause, that mission, that belief that you have deep inside your soul that um, kind of drives everything you do. It's, it's like this, this lighthouse, this North Star. And for me, it typically means it's bigger than yourself and you have something that what you, what you want to bring into the world is good for kind of the whole world for all of humanity. It's something that really is going to make a difference. It's more other focus as opposed to, to self focus. And it's that thing, I think you could definitely put it in there with, with passion because it's the pull, right? It's, you're just, you're so pulled to having to do it and it is for the good of other people. It's bigger than you and for the good of others is kind of my definition of what I think purpose driven is for, for me. And th this is awesome, though. What a great question, because I'm going to take a slightly different angle here. Excellent. Is that for me, it's incredibly selfish. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Seriously, seriously. <laughs> and and, and this, is, this is part of what I say to people as well, is that um, it's about doing the work that I'm here to do. It's about me being on my own purpose, following my calling. I have no idea why I happen to show up with this passion or obsession about business and about marketing and uh, about communication and all of that. But all I know is that I am driven by it internally. It's like I need to self-express this stuff. I, I, I'm obsessed with it. I want to share it. I, I absolutely do want to help people. But my very first kind of uh, place that I'm coming from is I am internally motivated to do this. This is what I like doing. This is fun for me. Um, I won't say it's easy because it's challenging, but challenge is one of my driving needs. And, uh, I'm fine with it. Uh, but it is, in a way, very, very selfish. Uh, so it's like, well, it's like you have to do it. It's almost like like there isn't there isn't um, there isn't a choice. It's that that thing inside of you is so great that it it has to happen. Yeah, like, and it's fun and it's awesome. And I and I think that's the reason we get up every day, even when it's challenging. Is because I, we have to do this in the world. I keep, I keep coming back to it. I keep coming back to it. And, 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 I, and I get off course every once in a while where I go, oh, this would be easier. Or, yes. you know, people are asking for this and I should do this instead. And I keep coming back to it. It's, and I feel like it's, it's why I'm here it, yes. and that I need to do it. And for some of us, we're, we're just built that way. I know I'm not the only person that is built this way. I've certainly um, had had clients that feel exactly the same way, that this is their purpose. And there's there's a freedom in that as well when you kind of let go and you go, okay, this is why I'm here. Um, this is the work I am meant to do. It's this idea of like, you know, right livelihood kind of thing. It's yeah. like, 
this is what I'm here to do and I need to do it. So I might as well just get on with it. Um, but I, I really love it that yours is out and mine is in because yeah. <laughs> I actually think when the two combine, it's really freaking awesome. Exactly. And I think it, it is a definite combination um, of the two. It's, it's and, you know, it's and. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I would say, and I believe that for all of us who have this kind of purpose, mission and calling, I think it is a positive thing in the world. Yes. Um, if, if for nothing else, other than we um, create a role model in whatever small way that is, um, that it can be done and that it's okay. And that other people um, are free to express theirs. I can't remember the Marianne Williamson quote, but there's a good one about that. Uh, about, you know, by doing this, we liberate others to do the same thing. Yes. And I think deep down, all of us uh, want to have a positive Im impact in the world. Agreed. And that all comes into this purpose uh, driven place as well. Yes. So, so thank um, you for that question. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So awesome. Uh, if I'm away from it too long, I feel lost. Totally. You feel like you're, you're off your path. Something's wrong. It's like, no, yeah. totally agree. Um, I have found my purpose, but it doesn't come from childhood or early adulthood. I had a transformation into this about eight years ago. Sometimes, sometimes here, it must have come from inner child, not from me. You know what? I think there's two sides of that. Like, I think if I look at Simon's work, like Simon would say that your why is, is kind of your origin story from where you come from, which is great. And then you have this thing called your just cause, which your just cause is like that. I think it's like that movement. It's like your work. It's like the things that you actually do in the world, almost similar to, to the what, but it's driven by this kind of bigger mission um, kind of thing. So I, I think you can have both, you know, like I think it's how we show up is definitely shaped from our environments of when we were younger and, and those kinds of things. And then I think we also have this, this just cause and that can become our purpose. You know, I, I think it's, it comes almost down to semantics and I think it's, I think both are totally great. And I think how we, because as we grow and we learn and we work through our childhood stuff and all those things, we kind of, we're always shifting and we're, we're changing into, um, new humans, you know, we're learning, we're growing, we're evolving, we're transforming, all of those things are happening. So I don't think we just stay static. And those things come from the experiences that have influenced us. But it doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be our, you know, end all be all. So I, I think there's, I think there's two pieces. And I used to be stuck. No, it's only that thing that comes from your childhood. That's your inner thing. And I think that's a part of it. And we do have these, these just causes. Like if I would say for me, like my just cause or whatever is I want to create this world where everybody feels like they matter. Like I am on a mission to make that happen in every single thing that I do. I'm not sure that came from, from my childhood. Could have, I don't know. Probably did. Um, I don't care, quite honestly, you know, and then the other piece of that is I want to inspire people to take action to create the life that they really, 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 really want. Did that come from my childhood? I don't know. But, you know, but I know that that's what I want to do. And am I really going to spend a lot of time questioning it? No, I'm just going to go do it. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think we say too much in our head of where did this come from? I'm not really sure. And I think it's great to look at that and not get stuck there. So, yeah, that's, that's my thought. Okay. I'm going to read these really quickly. You can add to that too. That's just my thoughts for the day. And I reserve the right to change my mind when I feel like it <laughs> because I'm always learning and growing. And sometimes I have different opinions, but for right now, that's, that's where I, that's where I lie. Oh, that's another permission slip. You're, yeah. you're able to change your mind. You're able to grow and to evolve. Um, that's totally okay. That is a permission slip for everybody that is on a growth path who loves to learn. It's, yeah. It's like talking about ideal clients and target markets and stuff like that. It's like, yes, I changed my opinion. Exactly. <laughs> I learned new stuff. I learned new stuff that I changed how, how I, uh, how I talk about it now. Yeah. 
Um, and I expect that I'm going to change in the future too, because I'm continually learning. Because I'm going to continue to grow and learn. Yeah. Uh, thanks for sharing, because I see it as being what naturally rises within, within each of us. And yes, it is unique to each of us, and it can be challenging at times in life to clarify. I find it's what, off, what often clients are looking to try to find when they come to me saying they want clarity. is because their purpose has become fuzzy throughout life, yet there is something deep within them that knows something is missing like they are lost T totally exactly i think being able to i'm a like anyone that works with me knows this i'm a giant 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 fan of being able to articulate your purpose articulate that just cause right because that articulation does bring clarity and sometimes it takes a long time to get the right words but you can get the essence of it you can get a start of it and you just keep working at it and working at it till it becomes a lot clearer um here we go I have spent 80% of my time doing marketing to create opportunities for my purpose. How do I reconcile the marketing, which is not my passion, which I have to do so I can do what I'm here to do? Let's see if we can bring a little bit of that into tomorrow when we talk about messaging. I will, uh, I will make a note of that yeah because uh, that deserves a longer answer than um than we're able to give three minutes over time <laughs> yeah it's a it's a fabulous fabulous question thank you for asking yeah thank you so much for asking because i love it because i think many people see that and often we look at things in silos too how do i do this if i'm this so i think tomorrow when we're talking about the messaging and doing the marketing what we will absolutely give that the time that it deserves because Patty's right. Um, it to, to give you service and value that, that requires more than a 30 second response. Yeah. So we will definitely, definitely cover that tomorrow. Um, Thanks for the question and yeah. the segue. <laughs> yes, it's perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you guys for being with us here again today. Um, it's, it's, it's actually an honor to be able to serve you guys for this hour, to be able to have you ask us questions. Thank you for the engagement. Um, it lets us know what you want to hear and, and even more value that we can bring forward to you guys. So as Patty says, we will see you tomorrow. You can say it because you're better at it because <laughs> I forget. Same bat time, same bat channel. That's right. Woohoo! Have a fabulous day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye now.